It is a miracle that Michel Ebersold can swim at all. Six years ago, doctors told him he'd probably never be able to take part in athletics again. But he refused to accept their dire prognosis. In August 2008, Ebersolt was a German soldier serving in Afghanistan when he was critically wounded in an attack. The memories plague him to this day. He says he still dreams about it. Standing in front of the vehicle, a man on a motorbike drives up, looks over and grins. At that moment, I realized he is one of them. I knew in an instant. Then came the blast. Before I finished thinking there would be an explosion, it happened. He blew himself up just two meters away. I still see that in my dreams. And right afterwards, how I looked around. For my comrade, who was also wounded, I searched for him. Then I checked myself from top to bottom to see if everything was still attached and what kind of injuries I had. Now at an army sport therapy center, it is time for some archery. Ebersolt and these other men were wounded in action. They are spending several weeks here. The idea is that sport can help them re-engage with the world and life, set goals and deal with their traumas. After the attack in Afghanistan, the doctors gave Eberswald a 10% chance of survival. He has undergone 45 operations since 2008. He tells us about his injuries. The blast burst both his eardrums. He had second and third degree burns to his face, arms and hands. Liver damage because of the gases released in the explosion. A thigh muscle was almost entirely destroyed. And a smashed femur and a broken fibula. Ebersolt is doing 11 different kinds of sport to regain strength and agility. And the coaches are very demanding. The difficult training regime comes with a lofty goal. Ebersolt was selected to join the German team at the first Invictus Games for wounded, injured and sick servicemen and women. They were held last week in London. Ebersolt likes being in this group, spending time with other wounded soldiers. They don't pay so much attention to his own injuries. He says he's pleased the German armed forces are now doing more to care for their wounded veterans. That includes psychological care. Psychologist Heidrun Glinka says some of the men have purely psychological wounds. They're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Others also have physical injuries, and they're often troubled by issues about their care. What will their future look like? Also in their private lives, so many things have changed. The families have to get used to their disabilities, learn to deal with their medical conditions and with their need for help. Back home, Ebersolt and his wife Heike enjoy playing Monopoly. They were married two years ago but have known each other since they were young. They used to be neighbours. After he survived the suicide attack, Ebersolt was brought back to Germany for treatment. Heike visited him in the hospital. They fell in love and she stood by him through difficult times. The doctor told me I was the stronger one, Heike tells us. I became the one to decide what had to be done and when. Like we have to clean the wound now or put cream on it so it will scar less. You could say I took charge. That meant we argued quite a lot, but it also brought us closer together. Mm -hmm. 
As part of his arduous rehab, Abersalt put together lots of model vehicles. It helped him regain dexterity. Now, making models is his main hobby. It also gives him time to reflect and to think about the comrade who was with him when they were attacked in Afghanistan. Michel tells us that his comrade survived the attack but died a year later as a result of his wounds. It is always with me, he says, because he died on my birthday. The day he died is my birthday. So whenever I celebrate being alive, I am reminded that he did not make it, unfortunately. On the weekend, Michel and Heike Ebersold enjoy being out in the countryside. They're planning to move here soon. At age 28, he's also planning a new professional future. He's starting a course in office administration. He wants to spend lots of time with his wife after all they've been through together. Ebersalt said she chose to be with him despite everything. That was a real proof of love. Not everyone would have done so. It was hard, especially at the beginning. Just a few days ago, Michelle and Heike travelled to London for the Invictus Games at the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. It was the biggest sporting competition for wounded soldiers ever held. At this point, Abersalt had already competed in four disciplines but hadn't won a medal. Next came swimming and he was understandably nervous. His wife reminds him, there are only four competitors so he can't lose too badly. At worst, fourth, he quips. Mahaika teases him, Michel really wants a medal. The competition is tough at these games. Ebersort tells us that the German team only had two weeks to train, while the England team and most other countries had six months. That makes a big difference. The first Invictus Games were a high-profile event. Jill Biden, the wife of the US Vice President, was in attendance. Ebersort can hardly endure the excitement and the tension. For his coach, Christoph Hoffmann, winning is not the most important thing. He says athletic competition brings people together and the physical fitness and sport can help offset any handicaps. As you can see at these games, these athletes are a match for a healthy sportsman. The time has come. Ebersold and three other competitors take their places for the 50 metres freestyle. Will his intensive training bear fruit? Michelle Ebersold wins. But victory is snatched away a moment later. 
He's disqualified because organisers put him in the wrong group. He was in the race for the more seriously handicapped. The German team is upset. His colleagues try to console Ebersold, who is feeling down. It is strange, he says, to win, to finish first, only to be told I was being excluded from the race, that I won't be getting a medal. But it wasn't our fault. The organisers or the referees made the mistake because they put me in the wrong group. That was his last event. Not a single medal to show for his efforts. But if Ebersolt has learned anything in the last few years, it's not to give up. The doctors said I would be lucky to be able to walk properly or halfway properly, he tells us. Nobody thought I would ever be able to take part in sporting events like this or walk as well as I do. Not even Ebersolt himself. I told the doctor back then, I am going to walk again, I am going to do sport again one day. But he said, nah, that's very unlikely. Ebersolt said he is going to carry on training hard. He now has his eyes set on another, even bigger event, the Paralympics.